the German army of September 1939 totaled 3,706,104 men and 105,394 officers in 103 divisions, 86 infantry, 6 panzer, 4 light, 4 motorized infantry, 3 gebirgs or mountain, 4 motorized Waffen SS regiments, and 2 Fallschirmjäger Superatrooper regiments. Though the German army that invaded Poland could field 3,195 panzers in 33 panzer battalions, only 98 of these were Panzer III medium tanks and a further 211 Panzer IV medium tanks. The rest were Panzer I and II light tanks. But the German army lagged an adequate number of half-tracks along with minor shortages of anti-tank guns and infantry guns. On the other hand, the German army held considerable surplus stocks of machine guns, mortars, flag guns and artillery pieces. Though the decision to build up the Kriegsmarine, so the German Navy stock of capital ships, had hurt the army's ability to field the array of planned for armored fighting vehicles, the Wehrmacht strength proved more than enough to handle Poland in five short weeks, while suffering some losses. Poland's armed forces fought hard, inflicting roughly 45,000 German casualties, depending upon the sources. Next came Western Europe. Thus, despite German qualitative advantages in doctrine, organization and planning of May-June 1940 German assault on France and the Low Countries inflicted considerable losses on the Wehrmacht. For instance, the German army alone lost 154,754 men as casualties, including 26,000 killed. Of the 2,580 tanks and assault guns the Germans threw at the Allied army, nearly 30% were totally destroyed, 753 tanks and assault guns in total. These losses had not only been overcome, but as we will see in the preparation for Germany's planned invasion of the Soviet Union, the German economy armed the Wehrmacht with the weapons and munitions it needed to wage mobile warfare on the largest battlefields in military history. The quality of the German armored park took a quantum leap by June of 1941 over that of the previous year. Whereas more than half the panzers deployed in France in May 1940 were light tanks, by June of 1941 less than a third of the Panzer Division's tank strength were in these largely obsolete vehicles, with fully two-thirds of each Panzer Division's Panzer complement comprised of the far more capable Panzer 38T, Panzer III, Panzer IV and Sturmgeschütz assault guns. Most importantly, the Panzer III arguably the main battle tank of the German army in 1941, had been significantly improved by the summer of 1941. The Panzer III G variant series ended up comprising the overwhelming majority of such tanks in Germany's inventory, 1,090 of the 1,440 Panzer III by June of 1941. These upgraded Panzer III's featured 30mm thicker frontal armor than their predecessors for greater protection. In terms of hitting power, the 50mm L42 represented a huge improvement over the old 37mm guns. In addition, each Panzer division gained a motorized infantry regiment, increasing each such division's ability to operate in build-up urban areas, guard its flanks, sweep up bypass centers of resistance, hold terrain, and ward off counterattacks. Off-road mobility also improved 
as the number of half tracks increased, as did firepower further supplemented by the addition of assault guns and anti aircraft battalions to the Panzer divisions. Moreover, previous two light artillery battalions had been upgraded so that each Panzer division also deployed a heavy artillery battalion. As such, the June 1941 Barbarossa era Panzer divisions represented a far better balance of infantry, armor, artillery, supporting arms and thus combined arm strength that did the Polish-French campaign vintage Panzer divisions. Moreover, the Panzer divisions were the, not only part of the Wehrmacht enjoying a qualitative surge in equipment. While this sounds impressive, the German army could have been stronger yet in June of 1941, had not the Luftwaffe, so the German Air Force, and Kriegsmarine, so the German Navy, not sucked up increasing amounts of manpower. For instance, by June of 1941, the Kriegsmarine had 404,000 men, more than twice that as in June 1940. The Luftwaffe went from 1,104,000 men to 1,545,000 men. The Kriegsmarine's increase in size was particularly a mystery. The surface fleet had been largely decimated during the Norwegian campaign, and though the U-boat fleet was finally and rightfully growing, this was not to the tune of 215,000 men. As for the Luftwaffe, some of this increase has to be considered appropriate considering that in the year leading up to Barbarossa, not only did the Luftwaffe fight the costly Battle of Britain, but operations in the Mediterranean and the Balkans during the spring of 1941 had destroyed a further 466 aircraft. Moreover, the Luftwaffe had built up a huge network of bases in Eastern Europe as well as moved large numbers of anti-aircraft artillery east to support Barbarossa, including 956 of the dual-threat 88mm guns and roughly 1300 light 20mm and 37mm anti-aircraft guns. On the other hand, in spite of the fact that the Third Reich had forced 1.2 million prisoners of war and 1.3 million foreign workers into work as laborers within Germany, there was still 4.8 million military age and eligible German men working outside the military in the spring of 1941. Only 1.5 million of these men worked in armaments. Thus, even though the German army increased from 4,347,000 men on June 15, 1940 to 5,200,000 men exactly one year later, with the overall Wehrmacht reaching 7,309,000 men in June 1941 and more than 1.5 million men larger than the year before, there were still significant ineffectiveness in terms of how Germany's leadership allocated resources. Nevertheless, by the time Barbarossa would begin, the frontline German divisions assigned to fight in the East not only were largely fully staffed, but could rely upon 471,000 fully trained men in reserve. Furthermore, over two-thirds of the 151 divisions assigned to Barbarossa possessed a Feld Ersatz Battalion, so Field Replacements Battalion, with nearly 800 men in each battalion, and thus a further 90,000 men in reserve, with such battalions assigned to 114 Barbarossa divisions. Finally, Army High Command had an additional 12 divisions in reserve explicitly for backing up Barbarossa. This was not a military and economic machine lacking enough manpower to complete its assigned goals, but instead 
poor decision making were proving the biggest obstacles to constructing a military best capable of making Barbarossa a success. What is most striking about all of this is that it illustrates that the German Ostherr, so army in the east, was quite ready to do battle with the even larger Red Army. In fact, it shows that quantity wasn't really the issue, but qualitative methods that would prove more significant in deciding the titanic clash of arms in Eastern Europe and thus the Second World War's outcome.